be the 13th and uh, begin with old business, the minutes of the January 8th meeting. Sixth, sorry, January 6th. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve, Madam Chair. I second the motion. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And so there's nobody making no. <laughs> okay, uh, that's approved. Uh, COVID-19 relief funding. Kathleen or whomever. So this would be Mark Gassaway. I've asked him to provide an update on the funding that we've already spent um, through this year. And then in the new business, we'll be talking about some additional funding that will be coming. So I'll hand it over to Mark Gassaway. Good morning, Council. Am I, am I audio? Good. All right. Um, thank you for this opportunity to, to give this report. And, and actually, I would like to share with you just a sneak preview of a document that we are preparing. This is, this is a draft, so I don't have the final, but it, it may be final tomorrow for the retreat. Um, we're just just verifying a few numbers. This is a summary of the CARES Act fund uh, that have been distributed by the county. Um, and I just wanna highlight a few things. Uh, we've grouped this into three categories. One is our community and economic support. The second is the uh, government services that we provided. And then the third is the public health response. You can see that the total uh, of CARES Act funding that we've distributed so far has been almost $50 million. And uh, those are divided into these three main categories. Um, this uh, slide, this uh, um, report has some of the, the matrix of those, um, those individuals and households that uh, have been impacted by the support. Uh, we have a lot of detail behind it, but I wanted the council to have something that they would be able to have. Uh, I know you get a lot, asked a lot of questions about this. Um, so this will be provided. And again, we're just um, finalizing this report today and hopefully I can distribute copies at your um, retreat tomorrow. So uh, I don't know if you have any questions regarding this particular slide. This is the funding that uh, we have already received. Uh, so this is the, the 2020 CRF funding. A and as you may or, or may not know, um, the ability to spend some of this funding, particularly through the health department, has been extended. Uh, however, this is what we anticipate. So any questions? from council on this. Are there questions of the council? I just have one question. Yeah, Mark, are we gonna, or Kathleen, are we gonna um, put this out to the public press release type? Yes, to... this will be available. Uh, well, putting it out to the public will be someone else's office, but this is a report that we will give to council and I would anticipate that council will want to publish this or have it available on their website, so. Or okay. proactive, put it out, yeah. Press release of some kind. Uh, one of the things that I would like to share is, and I, I know some of the comments may be getting to council directly, but we have received um, a significant number of um, responses from the citizens through the agencies that have distributed these funds uh, through Clark PUD, through the Greater uh, Vancouver Chamber of Commerce of those businesses and individuals that receive these grants, and it is heartwarming. I can't think of another word to describe the response that um, the citizens have received. Uh, I only wish we had the ability to 
to do more because it has been so impactful in the lives of individuals and uh, those businesses that have uh, the county has been able to support. Um, I will detail out some of those responses and, and give those to you at, a, at another time, so. And if I may, Madam Chair, go ahead. So, uh, Mark, I think this is a great slide and I ho hopefully you will not just post it, but uh, once a finalized and approved that we'll do a press release on it. I guess my question is, I don't know if Venice is still on and has some comment of the 11,000 plus residents supported. Have we identified any group or groups that have been left behind that have not benefited uh, from the support that we've so far disseminated? I'm just looking for gaps uh, that we may need to fill uh, with future funding, relief funding. Yeah, that that 11,000 residents that um, relates primarily to those that received help from the um, PUD, from Clark PUD through the energy program. So those were grants that were given directly to residents for utilities. Uh, so, and then there's just a variety of metrics here. I don't know of any specific group that we have not been able to address. Um, that information may come quicker to you rather than to me. Uh, I, I know who we have helped and, and we can give you more information on that, so. Uh, Councilor Ketel, Mr. VG, uh, yes, we have served over 1,300 people for rental assistance, but we still have a way labor list that we need to address with some future funding. Thank you, Vanessa. Councilor Ketel, Mr. Okay, um, did you have uh, more to report to yes. us, Mark, at this point? Yes. Uh, okay. Th okay. This is this is a, will be a report for the CR funding that we have received. The new stimulus bill, which was approved on the the twenty seventh of December, I believe, uh, the date that is going to provide new funding, and it will be focused in. Um, a couple of different areas. I'm already uh, working with uh, Vanessa's staff, community services. The uh, one of the main focuses of the new funding is a program called emergency rental assistance. And we don't have an exact number. The uh, Washington state has received the uh, allocation for the state. However, under this new stimulus, Clark County is now considered a direct recipient. So we will no longer have to go through the state to receive um, our allocation for the new stimulus funds, which helps us in two, in, in many ways, but also requires us to do more work as well, because as a direct recipient, we will be have uh, additional requirements. However, uh, we're working with that, that program, just uh, again, a, uh, rough calculation would would will mean that we will receive somewhere between 15 and 20 million dollars for the emergency rental assistance program. Uh, there's also a program which will go directly to our public health department, and the estimation there is uh, upwards of 20 million dollars that we can use through the year 2021. The limitations. Uh, right now are, are for the entire calendar year rather than a um, piece of next year. So we're still learning about those programs, but there are significant amounts of dollars that will be coming into the county um, in both of those areas. So I, I just wanted to let council know that we are in the works. We, we have made application for the emergency rental assistance program the money coming to the health department or the our public health clark county public health uh, also is coming but it comes through uh, a different channel so we will be getting that information shortly so okay so that was part of your 2.2 uh, new business correct <laughs> so is that correct mark 
Uh, yes, I didn't really look at the okay. agenda. Sorry. <laughs> so, I, okay. So um, uh, let's move on. Did is there anything else, uh, Vanessa, that you have for us, uh, or is there anything that you have for us under old business and the COVID relief funding, other than responding to the question of of uh, Council Member G? Uh, no, I I just sent Mark an email. There's such an echo. Uh, just to make sure that all of our COVID-19 money was included in that slide, because we got some directly from the federal and the state. Yes, and and just clarification there, Vanessa. This is primarily the the main sources. There has been additional grants that we have received that aren't included in that slide. Some of the ones that went through community development, uh, elections received a grant to help with the elections, and then the uh, courts have also received small grants. So this this slide includes the, those major sources. There are some other grants that did not come through our control process. So does that answer? Yeah. yeah that it sounds like that answers a question, however, it raises another, which is I actually think that we should try to bring all of those funds together uh, if we're going to report to the public because we shouldn't leave any out. Uh, so I know that may uh, that may uh, <laughs> make your job a little bit harder, but I do believe that we should pull all of those funds together and be able to report that to the public because I think it's important that they yes, know. Yes, I agree. Thank you. I agree. Uh, just, and we'll just, move. Cap, okay. Am I doing Vanessa? my staff report now or in the new business? I believe in new business. Is that correct, Kathleen? That is, and you yes. can certainly do continue with the 2.2 now if you would like, Vanessa, just to um, finish up that topic since okay. Mark has already discussed it. Okay, why don't we go ahead and do that, uh, Council? Let's just, let's just go ahead and allow uh, Vanessa to give her report, and then we'll move back to the other items under new business. Vanessa? Thank you. Um, so today we come in with a staff report. Um, we are looking for approval to today to accept the money from the Department of Treasury. And uh, I'm gonna ask Michael to give a brief over of the, of the funding, and then we're here to answer any questions. Good morning, uh, Chair Quiring, Councilors, Michael Torres, Clark County Community Services. And um, just uh, following Vanessa's question or, or request, uh, we do not know, as Mark Gassaway alluded to, we do not have a lot of information on this funding yet. Most of what we know is actually requested in the staff report. And uh, basically, uh, we believe based on uh, the formulas that, that uh, the Department of Treasury uh, has provided that we will receive somewhere along the line of between 14.6 and as Mark Gassaway uh, indicated, maybe up to 20 million uh, to uh, provide uh, rental assistance to uh, moderate and low income households in the county and also utility assistance and that these funds would be available for our use through the 31st of December. About 65% of the funds would need to be obligated, however, by the 30th of September. Based on our experience with the state emergency rental assistance program last year, uh, we are very confident that uh, it will be very easy to expend those funds well before the 31st of December. To give you an idea, um, the emergency rental assistance program that was provided from the state uh, went into effect the 24th of August. We had expended uh, about $8 million of uh, funds uh, for rental assistance out into the community by the 30th of December. So, um, the, the need in this community is certainly out there for these funds. The biggest challenge uh, we are going to have um, is that one of the many requirements that is coming with these federal funds, on the positive side, 
They're not requiring any match and they're not requiring any share. But uh, the challenge that they do have is that 90% of the funds provided need to go out into the community in form of direct financial assistance. And the remaining 10% is all that is available for um, any of the direct program operating costs, any administrative costs, uh, no uh, indirect costs or negotiated indirect rates by any agency that receives this funds is allowed in that. So as, uh, as Mark uh, mentioned, uh, the fact that we are being direct recipients, it is going to create uh, a lot more work. 10% uh, is usually very, very thin to operate with as it is, and that includes for any of the service providers that we use to distribute these funds. So we're gonna be working really hard to identify how to do that. And, uh, and that is basically what we know to this point. Um, the state's first brief regarding these, these funds is tomorrow. Um, immediately after this meeting, uh, myself, Larry Stafford, Mark Gassaway, and our finance manager have a meeting uh, uh, about this. But we wanted to make sure that the council is aware and they are ready for us to be in the process of receiving these funds, uh, the setting up programs, uh, working on contracts. And Vanessa, is there anything else you would like me to cover? No. Just thank you. Um, and again, the 10% admin needs to be shared between, between our department, card public utilities, and all the nonprofit providers. And so what the other piece is, is we're asking you to prove them so we can be ready to accept it, go into contracts, and immediately put the service. Okay, I, I do have a, just a couple questions. Um, this, as you gave the report, Michael, just uh, it, it triggered a couple questions. Do you have any idea, or Mark, uh, anybody who's dealing with these funds, when the state district, when we went through the state, do we have an idea of how much the state uh, used for administrative costs? That's number one. Number two, I'll just ask the two questions and then see if I can get them. What it, what would, what do you predict would be the administrative cost. If 10% is thin, what are what what would be your estimate of what those actual costs are? So let me let me and then Michael jump in. So the state allowed us to have program staff charge and then admin. This is now combining both into that 10%. And so Michael, do you have any more? Uh, no, other than uh, what the state charged uh, for administrative costs internally to the state um, and what their average admin costs, I do not have information on that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate appreciate that. Uh, okay, so this are we going to act upon this then? Uh, the council. Can I ask a question. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman yes. Thank you. So I just want to focus on rental assistance uh, with the program that's already been in place and what we project. Do we feel as if uh, we've captured the entire need uh, within the county? So, for instance, if a landlord has a tenant or two or more that aren't paying rent, um, have we captured, do we know who they are? And is it the landlord that simply applies uh, for this for these payments, for the money owed to them. I mean, what what do we, what have we accomplished so far in that regard, and and what more of a need is there for this year? Uh, good morning, Councillor Medvedji. So uh, to this point, we have uh, provided rental assistance to just under fourteen hundred households, um, and that's over five thousand months of rental assistance uh, with the state. Uh, eviction uh, prevention rental assistance funds, uh, the landlord was not allowed to apply directly. Uh, it had to be the household. The landlord did have to provide some uh, additional documentation. One of uh, the interesting changes with these federal funds is that uh, the landlord will be allowed to apply 
uh, directly on behalf of the tenant, uh, which should indicate, you know, which should make more people be able to receive this assistance. Uh, regarding that, it is uh, that will the need be completely met uh, between the state uh, emergency rental assistance funding and this funding? Um, I, I do not believe so. Uh, the emergency rental assistance funding from the state, I mean, as uh, as I mentioned, we fully expended that between August and December. Um, a lot of the households that uh, have not received assistance yet have had uh, arrears in their rents accumulating, which increases the amount of assistance that they need. Um, and uh, with uh, the state emergency rental assistance program, the maximum rental assistance that was allowed was six months. Most of the people receiving rental assistance only received up to three months of rental assistance, just based on the timing of, uh, of those programs. Also, based on the original estimates uh, Commerce gave us based on our poverty rates, they thought about 8,000 households would need rental assistance. And as I mentioned so far, we have about 1,400 households. The last thing I would say to that is all these numbers I have mentioned uh, really are rental assistance for households and individuals that are currently housed. Um, both the state eviction prevention rental assistance program and these new funds really focus on uh, preventing evictions uh, because of the economic crisis caused from the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, things like avoiding the, the eviction cliff after the eviction moratoriums expire. Um, these are not, none of these have been funds that have really been able to be focused on the population in our community that is currently unhoused. Michael, if I could just add a little bit to that as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, there's there's a lot of things we don't know yet about this program. Uh, what we do know is that um, the Department of Treasury is uh, in their formula, about 45% of the available funding is going directly to direct recipients. That will be including Clark County. That, that means that 55% of the funding will be going to the state for the state to allocate. And we don't know anything about how they're going to do that yet. Uh, we're not, so So in addition to the direct funding that we receive, we may be eligible for 50, the other 55%. We just don't know yet. Um, so the other nuances about this program, it requires uh, individuals or those who qualify to re-qualify every three months. So there's some nuances to this program that are different um, and the period covered is a longer period. So we're still learning all of, all of these. So it's difficult to answer your question, yes or no, but we are going to, you know, we are going to participate, you know, council willing, so. And I just wanna add, we're gonna build off of what we already, we already created from the state uh, so we're using the same providers, uh, same Clark Public Utility System. Uh, so, so we're just going to move forward. We're going to ask you to prove to prove this. So once we get more, we can move right into con contracts with those providers. So that's what that's what I was thinking when when you uh, noted that earlier. It does help not to reinvent the wheel and and the you know reduce costs, administrative costs, or whatever to try to help to stay within or not go over too much that 10 percent so um are there other questions of the council just uh before we move to um approve this i see none could i get a motion then to approve uh, accepting this grant these grant funds a motion to approve madam chair Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve uh, the the grant for community uh, for the county manager to sign the grants and contracts related to accepting this and distributing federal emergency rental fund assistance. 
uh, provided by U.S. Treasury. Uh, are, is there further discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, and Vanessa. Good work. Okay, we'll move then to uh, the first item under new business, Proclamation for National School Choice Week. Um, I think you got the documentation to look at this draft. I would just note that there is a typo in the draft in the one, two, three, four, the fifth, whereas that should be um, educational variety, not, not note, but not only helps diversify. So uh, with that <clears throat> improvement, I guess we're we're looking for uh, the ability to put this on the agenda. Is that it? So typically with a proclamation that we have not done before, of course, there are a, a number of the proclamations that we do every single year. Um, but with ones that we haven't done before, we bring them to council time to uh, see if there's a majority of the council that wants to put this on for the agenda. So that's the question today. I apologize for the typo. I'll make sure that if the council approves oh. it, that we get the, the correct version. Yeah, that's fine. Any comments of council? Well, so I'm on. Clear. So I appreciate the uh, editor in chief's comment uh, on making the correcting the typo. But do we need to vote today on this or not? So we would need at least three to place it on the agenda for the council meeting next week, um, and, and then one. we would circulate it to uh, for signature ahead of time um, so that it would be prepared for next Tuesday. Okay. I'm one. I'm two. Okay, we got three. Moving to the next proclamation, which is Human Trafficking Awareness and Prevention Month. I'm all for this. So the, I did, this is Kathleen. I did send an email this morning. The Human Trafficking Task Force of Clark County would like the council to recognize um, Human Trafficking Awareness and Prevention Month, which is in January. So they are asking for this proclamation also to be added to next week's agenda. As I said, I'm very much in favor of this. Other counselors? Uh, I'm I'm like as well. Okay. Good. Great. Well, we'll put that both of them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, counselor reports. Uh, Chair, I have one. Yes. Uh, last night at the CTRAN board meeting, uh, uh, Mayor Ann McInerney Ogle was elected uh, chair for the coming year, and I was elected vice chair. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations on that. And I did have a, co a comment if Ca Councillor Lentz was done. Okay. Um, so I had sent out, I met with the ecology, uh, the, the regional uh, rep and another teammate uh, recently, mainly focusing on the Lacamas watershed, uh, Lacamas Lake, Round Lake, Fallen Leaf Lake. Uh, and out of that came a request by them to, do, to make a presentation to us. One small component of uh, what we were discussing was uh, basically manure management throughout the county. Uh, I thought it would be good to give them an opportunity. I think it's going to be uh, discussed in the future. Uh, I, I'm still waiting on an update on what happened with the interlocutory agreement between CAMAS and uh, the County Council, but I, I also met with the director of the Lower Columbian Fish Recovery Board, and they have a keen interest and role in our watershed as well. So uh, CAMAS is waiting on some grants. Um, the Department of Ecology is probably going to have a main, their main effort in the future will be on the Lacamas watershed. It's on their, on their radar screen, as we used to say. So I think there's a lot of momentum for us to partner with Camus and um, uh, our, our clean water department, particularly, but other state agencies and organizations. So I'm hoping we can uh, move that interlocutory agreement 
uh, along if it hasn't already been signed. I'm not sure what the status is, but so I just wanted to let you know about that meeting I had with Ecology, and I'm hopeful that we give them some time to make a presentation, uh, not only to give um, some visibility to that new program, but also uh, to help inform us on future decisions. So this is Kathleen, just um, just so you're aware, I have left a message with the city manager in Camas. We have not received a signed interlocal agreement back. Um, I will call him again, um, probably in the next couple of days, just a touch base. And then once we get that, our I did talk to staff yesterday, we'll bring back the conversation during a council time agenda before it goes on the council meeting for approval so that everybody um, is on the same page on what our role is with that interlocal agreement. So I will let you guys know as soon as I hear anything back from Camus. Thank you very much. That's all I had, Madam Chair. Thank you. Other reports? Okay, uh, Lindsay, do we have um, a report on policy issues? I have just two quick things for you. Um, <clears throat> the first is that we do, even though Monday is a holiday, um, it is not a holiday for the legislature, so they will be in session, and so we still will have our call. Um, so that information and the information for members of the public to be able to listen in on that is available as well. Um, but just as a reminder, it's a holiday, but we still will be having that call. The other thing I wanted to let you know, I just heard from Josh um, that the legislators um, received a report recently that the total estimated loss in transportation revenue due to COVID um, is about $524 million this biennium, and early estimates anticipate a loss of an additional $234 million next biennium. Um, so right now, it doesn't look like we're going to have uh, an impact on the 179th Street project. So everything's you know still on the list as it will, um, but it's just one of those situations that paints the picture of kind of where we're at uh, with those state transportation projects and, and making sure that we work to preserve to keep that 179th Street project within the budget. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, do we have, oh, whoops, do we have any work session requests? Sorry, I skipped that again. There's no work session requests. Today. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. We are going to go into <laughs> executive session then for two pending litigations for an hour and 10 minutes, as well as RCW 4230-110-1G for 15 minutes, and there will likely be action afterwards. So uh, there's possible action afterwards. So we'll have to come out. We'll we'll go we'll go out of this, go into uh, executive session, and then come back out and adjourn this this meeting. So uh, if there's nothing else, I will see you over in executive session. Thank you.